Welcome to this video series on the Python challenge. This website was designed by Nadav Samet and it consists of not pranned styled challenges. This website is designed to help you to learn how to use Python models and such and such. But before I begin, I strongly suggest trying these challenges yourself and use these videos as a tool to see another perspective on how to complete these challenges as it's not really going to help you just to watch these videos without even looking at the problem yourself. But feel free to do that. Starting the challenge, we see the introduction level. We have a hint suggesting to change the URL, so that's what I will do. I will try changing the 0 to a 1 and see what happens. So it tells me that 2 to the 38 is a bigger number. Well, who would have guessed? Now I will open up command prompt to get my interactive Python running so I can try a few things. Here I can try to do 2 plus 2 and I get the answer 4. I will now run what 2 to the 38 is, and I'll try copying it and putting it in the URL. Oh, and it works. Uh, so that's pretty much the introduction level, and now we get onto the real first level. For challenge one, we see that there's garbled text and an image. The image shows K to M, O to Q, E to G. And that hints for some kind of cipher, specifically a shift cipher. We see that we see from the hint in the image that the shift will be of the value two, since k goes to m and k l m that's two shifts. Uh, o, o goes to q o p q uh, e goes to g e f g. Yeah, I can do my ABCs without going through the whole thing. I actually can't. It took me a lot of practice to remember those. Before we start with writing random spaghetti code, I'll just think of the basic idea first. All letters need to be shifted by two, and so technically, Y and Z will loop back to A and B. And that's kind of hard to do in a programming language. There's a few ways of approaching this problem. And the first way is to go through the text one character at a time and copy the letter plus two to a new string. That's what I'm going to be trying. First, I'm going to copy this jarble text into a string variable so I don't have to worry about it later. Let's create a function called decipher that will do what I've planned. Uh, let's start by creating a variable that stores the new string. And we then need to have a for loop for going through each character in the string. Then for each character, we want to test if the character is a y, a z, or anything else and see what we'll do based on what the letter is. So we'll need to test if the character is a y. And if so, let's add an a to the new string. And we will also test if the character is a Z. And if it is, we'll add B to the new string. We also don't want to modify any other things except for A to Z because we can see that there's a lot of spaces and random other things that we don't want to modify, uh, or I'm assuming we don't want to modify. So now we can have the else statement, which just takes the character and puts it to the new string unmodified. Now for the main brains of this little if statement and which is going to be to figure out what to do with the letters a through x, I'll use I'll do the shift on these letters using ASCII values. So I will take the ASCII decimal of the value, add two to it and convert it back to a character. And I can do these using two handy dandy functions called char and ord. And now we can add this new modified character to our new string. Now we can test if this works by opening the Python interactive for this script. I now call the decipher function with the string I created earlier on. And now I'll show you the second method of approaching this problem, which is hinted in the result. So I'll start by creating a new function with the string as an input again. I'll then continue by creating a translation table using the make trans function. So this function takes two inputs, the first one being the input characters, and the second being the output characters. And we want it to be A to Z and C to X, A, B. Now I can return a translated version of this string using the translate function, which is called on the string and takes the translation table as the parameter. And now I can test this again using the Python interactive and I see that it works. But now if we actually read the result, it tells us to do the same thing, but for the URL. And the URL has map.html, so let's try doing it to map. We get OCR. 
So now I'll try putting this OCR in the URL and we see that it gives the next challenge. That will be the end of this first video and I hope this helps someone and I'll see you in the next video.